Good morning, everybody. I'm Muriel Bowser. I am the mayor of Washington, D.C. I'm joined today by Interim Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice and our Chief Medical Examiner, Roger Mitchell. I'm joined by the best fire chief in the world, Chief Gregory Dean. Let's hear it for Gregory Dean. I'm also joined by the next fire chief for the District of Columbia, who I will introduce momentarily. Uh, you remember six years ago, uh, we all do, uh, I was campaigning for mayor for the first time. I told D.C. residents I would hire an experienced and forward-thinking leader for the district's fire and EMS department, and uh, I was elected. My team and I searched coast to coast uh, to find someone up to the task, someone who could modernize our department, who could work with the best men and women who are fighting fires and providing medical service, and who could ensure we were equipped to meet the needs of a growing city, a changing city, and would have the trust of our residents. And we found that person in Gregory Dean in Seattle. I think he thought uh, that he was retired then, uh, and we coaxed him to the best Washington, the one on the East Coast. And I'm fortunate, and our city is fortunate, that he has been with us for the past five and a half years. Over these past five years, Chief Dean has improved our fleet, transformed the cadet program and spearheaded innovative initiatives that keep our community engaged, like the Hands on Heart CPR program. We all know the ways that the men and women of DC Fire and EMS save lives every day, but it is remarkable how through Hands on Hearts, now tens of thousands of DC residents have already saved lives. And through this pandemic, I cannot express how grateful our community is to Chief Dean and his team for stepping up to have firehouse COVID training, and they did it uh, with just a few weeks preparation time. Thousands of DC residents get tested at neighborhood firehouses across the city uh, each and every week. And this is the story of the past five years, Chief Dean and his team rising to any challenge. So it is with great appreciation for all that he has done for our city that I congratulate Chief Dean on his retirement from the department. You always know that you're good at what you do when you retire from the same position multiple times. So on behalf of our community, Chief Dean, uh, I want to say uh, thank you and congratulations, uh, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Mayor Bowser, it has truly been an honor and a pleasure to work for you. I have thrived on your, on your competitive energy to be the best and your ongoing support to make the DC Fire and EMS Department the best in the world. We started looking at EMS and grew into an efficient organization, able to fulfill our mission with your help and that of the council. New apparatus, new firehouses, new personnel, uh, new personnel protective equipment, the hiring of DC residents into the fire department, and the passing of presumptive laws. Says, I care more than the words. And for that, I thank you. I thank you, the city administrator, the deputy mayors, for your leadership. To my management team of Chiefs Baker, Donnelly, Douglas, Mills, Sollers, the doctors, Holman and Garrett, and of course, my Chief of Staff, Amy Morrill. I stand with a big smile today because we are where we are because of your leadership, guidance, and ability to interpret my thoughts into action and policy. And for that, I thank you. 
to all our administrative workers, from my assistant, Deborah Scott, to the communications director, Doug Buchanan, and to all those working at Reeves, fire prevention, training, the Office of Unified Communications, Fleet, Logistics, Adams Place, and the Police and Fire Clinic. You may be invisible partners to the public as fire trucks and ambulances roar up and down the streets, but to me, you are the backbone of the organization. And to the men and women who roar up and down the street, by the way, you are very lucky people, I am forever grateful for the kind treatment you provided to the residents and visitors to the District of Columbia. The coronavirus continues to test you, but each and every day, all of our fire trucks and ambulances are staffed because you continue to work wisely and provide the safety and that required to keep our citizens and yourself safe. I thank you for that. My first words right here in this station was when I was introduced were that this is a great department and I was honored to become a part of its rich history. My last words are that this is a great department and I thank you for allowing me to be a part of your history. Give a hand to Chief Gregory Dean. Uh, one thing that you may not know uh, is when I was recruiting Chief Dean, we uh, were pretty focused on recruiting from outside of the department. Uh, we thought uh, that we needed a fresh start uh, in leadership. Uh, we knew that we had fantastic men, men and women uh, but they needed a leader uh, who not only had their confidence, but the confidence of the residents of the District of Columbia. This time, I'm recruiting inside the department. Uh, Chief Dean and I had a very long conversation, uh, and he told me how confident he was in the leadership team, in the pipeline to leadership, and where we were with recruitment and training, with where we were, with how we were communicating to members of the public, to how we had transformed in uh, our, our fleet, and how we had transformed training, uh, and how we had focused on the medical services. Uh, and it was, in his view and in mine, a great tribute to where we are uh, to look to someone who has come up at DC Fire and EMS, has had the opportunity for leadership, who has had the opportunity to, to gain the trust of the men and women, uh, who knows DC and loves DC and all of its neighborhoods across all eight wards. So it is with great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, um, that I announce to you that I will nominate John Donnelly uh, to be the next fire chief for DC Fire and EMS. John Donnelly. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ma Mayor Bowser. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. I am John Donnelly, a 28-year veteran of the Fire and EMS Department and a Ward 4 resident. I would like to start by thanking Chief Dean for all he has done for us, for the city and the department. He has left big shoes to fill. I am glad to say that I learned a lot about grace and courage from him. I would also like to thank Mayor Muriel Bowser for the honor of nominating me to lead the men and women of the District of Columbia Fire and EMS Department and to become a member of her cabinet. I look forward to working with Council Member Charles Allen, Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, and the rest of the Council, and with our unions, Local 36 President Dabney Hudson and Local 3721 President Darnelli Green. I also look forward to working with interim Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice, Dr. Robert Mitchell. Thank you, sir. And the interim City Administrator, Kevin Donahue, who as Deputy Mayor was a great partner for fire and EMS. There are many, many people I should be thanking and would like to thank for their support and mentoring that prepared me for this position. To my wife, Jermaine, 
daughter Christina, sons Jack and Patrick, and daughter-in-law Stephanie. Thank you for your support and understanding. To our executive team, Chief Baker, Chief Douglas, Chief Mills, Chief Silers, Chief of Staff Amy Morrow, Dr. Holman, Dr. Garrett, John Coombs, and Doug Buchanan. I believe my nomination as Fire and EMS Chief is a reflection on how well we have worked together and all the things that have been accomplished by this team over the last five years. I thank you and look forward to our team and our successes in the future. To the men and women who have worked with me over the past 38 years, from you I've learned how to be an EMT, a paramedic, a firefighter, an officer, a father, and a husband. I hope to emulate the best of all of you as the fire and EMS chief. I would like the community and the department to know that I will work hard for you and I will lead by honoring our core values and incorporating them into everything that we do. We call these values the basics because if we do the basics, everything else is right. And the basics are bravery, accountability, safety, integrity, compassion, and service. And Doug is telling me I need to take my mask off for the end of the speech. So um, I missed that at the beginning, but obviously it was probably a good thing. Um, to the members of the department, we will face uncertainty and challenges in the coming years. As our leadership team supports you in overcoming those challenges, please remember to treat each other and every person you come in contact with as a member of your family. Our path forward is the path we have been on. In closing, thank you again, Mayor Bowser, and let's get to work. All right, let's hear it for the next chief, John Donnelly. And if you didn't hear the first part of his speech, I think he said his wife and his kids allowed him to get here. So let's hear it for the Donnelly family. And then he said that the executive team and his nomination was a reflection of their great work and that of the men and women of DC Fire and EMS. So let's give them a big round of applause. And then he closed by saying the path that we aren't, we're on is the path that we're going to proceed on. And I think that is a remarkable statement. So thank you, John. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, Mark. Uh, one, I'm wondering if anybody knows, will Chief Donnelly be the first chief of the D.C. Fire Department who would have come on at the beginning of his career as a recruit? Do you know? Does anybody know? Does anybody know from Fire and EMS? Veto. Chief Donnelly, congratulations. One second. Let's ask your okay. first, answer your first question. What's the question, Mark? The question was, is he the first fire chief that started with D.C. Fire and EMS? He is not. Donnie, can I just ask you to reflect on, you know, your first day and if you ever dreamt that you would finish your career as chief of the department that you started on as a recruit? What that means to you? Um, I'd worked some other places before I came to DC Fire. It had been my dream. Uh, I had a lot of role models that worked here. So just getting here on my first day was a pretty um, amazing opportunity for me. And I was very happy about that. I had no clue that one day I could become the Fire and EMS Chief. Um, I was just worried about not messing up that first day. <laughs> yes, sir. Would yes. you, yeah, would you be able to talk a little bit about inheriting a department that had some trouble when it was when you first started and what you sought to improve uh, when you took on this role years back? So I, I, I realized there were the um, visual issues that everybody saw up front, but when you looked at the core of the organization, it was a great organization. I stand by those words. Those were my first words I uttered. We organized we became a team together and we made decisions together. 
And that's what you see today, and that's really, uh, uh, you know, kind of my style is I, I needed to spend time, learn about the organization. The organization needed to learn about me. And after that, we were able to get to work and accomplish a lot of, a lot of great tasks together. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, congratulations on your retirement, Chief Dolly. Congratulations as well. I'd like to ask you what led to your retirement and what advice you're giving the Department of so, what was the last part? What advice you have oh. for the leaders of this department? Okay. So, what led to my retirement is that um, I was actually, um, so I have 50 years in the fire service. So, I think I, I, I qualify for it. <laughs> any day is a good day to go to retirement. I probably would have uh, gone in May, but then we had COVID going on and it didn't seem the right time. Uh, I've always believed that whoever is uh, the chief, should, should drive their budget. We're getting ready to start the new uh, fiscal year, and so Chief Donnelly gets to put his fingerprints on the budget that'll lead this department. The advice I have for everybody is this. If we take care of each other and we take care of our residents, life is pretty easy. So, you know, um, you know we have a saying here, it doesn't matter if it's four o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock in the morning, we're gonna treat everybody just like their family. And as long as we continue to do that, uh, the sky's the limit. Yes, sir. Here's the weighs on you the most when you reflect on your tenure here at the department, maybe the Kennedy Street fire? So, really, uh, it goes back further than that. My uh, third day on the job, we lost Lieutenant Kevin McRae. And um, what I learned about this, that department in, the, in that short amount of time is really what made it easy for me to stay and do my job. These, these people went out of their way to take care of their members. The mayor and the council walked hand in hand with me, helping guide in that. And so I realized that I had come to a place that felt like family. And uh, it was a terrible loss losing Kevin McRae. Uh, we continue to keep up with his family and do those, do, do those type of things. But in those trying moments, you learn a lot about people. And what I learned is that this is a great organization. And uh, Chief Donnelly, I'm just wondering what you would say would be your first priority as chief. Is there something that you think needs your priority attention, uh, other than obviously the obvious? But you know, what will you look to as you take the reins of this department? So. Um, being an insider, I, I think the main priority is making sure that the executive team is comfortable with my leadership style and that we continue to work on all the things that we've been working on. We have a lot of projects going, and we don't want any of those to stop. Obviously, as the chief said, we have a budget coming up. But we are we're working on, in an agency this large, we work on a lot of things. We measure our data, and we want to keep doing that. So that, that's where we're going to be. We're going to keep going. You're not going to see any drastic changes. Um, and, and I think that's the important message here. Yes. Uh, it seems as though the caseload in the district has kind of plateaued, and I'm wondering if you expect that to continue in the coming months. I have any sense of why that is. Uh, the, your question is about COVID and our numbers plateauing. Um, plateauing is not a good thing. Um, we want to, especially if uh, we can't attribute new cases to other um, quarantine cases. Um, so our health department uh, warns us. I think it is a good thing that we don't see case, new cases in the hundreds, but we still see too many uh, new cases. Does that answer your question? when D.C. might start to move toward lifting more restrictions at this point? Uh, as I have said many times, I think we all as a city uh, need to be focused on getting kids back to school uh, November the 9th. Uh, and we shouldn't expect uh, life to go back to normal until kids are back in school. One last question for me. On the D.C. faces rollout, uh, there's been a number of questions about the timing of that and uh, how it was rolled out. I'm hoping you can just explain a little bit about why you chose to do this when you did and present it in the way that you did. Um, well, I think certainly uh, we, we have seen uh, attention and we have seen some pretty negative behavior around um, questionable monuments or particularly statues in the city. Uh, and I thought it was a good idea to understand the full breadth of um, 
issues of concern uh, or people of concern or markers of concern uh, in the district. Uh, certainly, we're not up against a timeline to, to do anything, but I think it is important that people have that information when they start talking about um, honoring different people or places or events. Interpreting what the mission of this committee was, especially when it was a, in regards to federal monuments like the Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial, uh, it doesn't seem like it was your intention to tear down or remove those. But I'm hoping you just clarify what the committee was intended to do with their efforts when they mentioned those federal monuments. Well, I think, uh, as I've already said, and I think that, that you've reported, it was not our intention to do anything with the federal monuments uh, and memorials. I, I said, I, I think, t to you or to somebody yesterday, um, that there are a lot of different and heated positions on this. No two people uh, tend to think the same thing when you, when you talk about this, and I think that that kind of diversity of views was reflected uh, in the working group's initial report. Uh, I understand, however, um, that people will intentionally misconstrue things, um, and that is why the report was adjusted uh, so that the federal portion uh, was removed. Yes. Mayor, can I ask you, um, the ACLU of D.C. came out with a response to the police-involved shooting of Kay. And in, I'd like to ask your response to the ACLU, where they say the officer made no attempt to de-escalate, that there was no warning or direct, directive to drop the weapon, and also they accused the police department's approach to gun uh, recovery as dangerous and ineffective. Can you please respond to that? Well, I won't uh, talk specifically about what's being investigated. Um, we put out uh, the video yesterday for, for people to see. Uh, the chief emphasized then that it was the matter um, of the the shooting and the death of Mr. K was in preliminary. It was preliminary and at the start of its investigation. So we will allow that to proceed. Also, any response to the police reform commission calling for an independent investigation? For who? The the community, the police reform commission that involves community members that they're looking into as the police in an independent investigation. I'm sorry, Stephanie, I'm having trouble hearing you. It's the the police reform commission involving community members who are looking into incidents that they're calling for an independent investigation. Police what commission should be? Yes, yeah, so the police reform commission that was established by council that is looking at activities of law enforcement and going to be making recommendations over the next several months. Um, I've been in touch with the police reform commission. I'll be meeting with them um, this evening to talk to them about some of the things that they're looking at, um, not only as it relates to uh, last night or two days ago shooting, but also uh, as it relates to in general what they're thinking about surrounding police reform. Um, so we will get back to the, to, to the media as we communicate with them a little bit more about what their, their thoughts are. Yes. Uh, the CDC has issued recommendations that jurisdictions begin to prepare uh, to distribute a vaccine to frontline workers and first responders. Uh, is Department of Health, is your administration following that and getting prepared to do that? Uh, we've been getting prepared for the vaccine, um, not related to uh, any new guidance that you're talking about uh, in terms of making sure we have materials and can support uh, providers um, with materials. Uh, and I will uh, await Dr. Nesbitt's comments on any new CDC recommendations. Anything else? To yesterday's release of the video, um, while the law does require you to release the body cam video from the officer who fired the shot, there were multiple officers on that scene. Chief Newsom acknowledged that there are other vantage points from other body-worn camera. Will you, you have the discretion to release that other body-worn camera from other officers. Will you do that to give the public every possible vantage point that they could from this incident? Well, I think uh, the chief also mentioned, Mark, that um, during the investigation, there are many more pieces of evidence that could come out, including um, video. So we're going to follow the, the investigative process. Will you release the police body-worn camera from other officers on the scene? If that is, if that's what the investigation suggests, then we would. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you.